Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman. I want to run you through a couple of really cool Windows terminal tips and tricks that you may not be aware of. But before I do that, I just want to remind you that there's a lot of videos on the uh, YouTube here. So be sure to go back and explore them. Don't just subscribe and think about future videos. Think about the ones that I've already done, including lots of ones on the Windows terminal, as well as playlists that explore uh, Windows 11 and cool things like Space Cadet, C Sharp, and on and on and on. So be sure to check those out. All right, let's talk about Windows Terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and launch my Windows Terminal. Now I've done an episode before talking about how I've modified my prompt. You can see I've got my blood sugar in the prompt there, and uh, I've got things like my Git branch and the current version of .NET or Node or Python or whatever, that's all at ohmyposh.dev, ohmyposh.dev. I'll link to it in the show notes. I've done videos on that before. But let's just talk about generalized ways to make your terminal experience a little bit better. Okay, oops. Let's go back over to home. I'm going to clear my screen out. And let's start with settings. So I click right here and I click on settings. We know that we can get to here, which is the graphical Windows Terminal settings dialog box. But just a reminder, if you go here and you hold down Shift and you click on settings, you'll actually open up the JSON, the JavaScript object notation representation of those settings. So these settings here and these settings here are the same thing. That's the way to edit it with a UI and that's the way to edit it with text, okay? You don't have to go into the text world if it makes you uncomfortable, but it's nice to know that you just click here and you hit shift and that will open up, or you can click here where it says open JSON file, all right? Now, here's some behind the scenes. You can also click on settings. Instead of holding shift, I'm gonna hold down alt. I'm gonna hold down alt, and what I'm gonna end up is not settings.json, but defaults.json. So I could potentially make changes to my defaults for everything and set stuff like you know initial rows or my fonts for everything including future um, future settings as well but you also have the ability to change those defaults and things like that from here so i could say i want my appearance or my starting directory or my font to be the same everywhere so just be aware that pressing shift while clicking on settings and pressing alt while click clicking on settings does potentially different stuff now we know that we can open up things in multiple tabs. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Ubuntu. I'm going to open up Command Prompt. I'll open up Windows PowerShell. So I've got all these different things opened up in different places. That can get a little bit overwhelming. I've got a lot of things running. I can actually right click here on the tab. I'm right clicking on the tab. I can rename the tab or change its color. So that's cool. So I can rename, hit color. We'll go and we'll hit that one's purple. We'll right click, we'll rename it. We'll say that's Ubuntu or development or test or staging or whatever, right? You have total control here. So we'll say this is production. Don't delete anything in production. Hit color, do that as well. So that's cool right off the bat. I can go and make changes to those tabs. I can rename them. I can color them and I make changes. Now, if you want, that can also be part of the profile. This Each one of these is a profile here, okay? Each one of these is a profile. So if we go back and we hit settings. I'm going to hold down shift so I can open that up in the uh, terminal here. If I go down, 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 and I say, here's a, here's a profile. Here's the profile for command.exe, right? So when I open up command.exe, it has this name. It has this background image. That image is aligned to the bottom right or over here if I'm not mirrored. And I can stretch it. And I can also set the tab color. So I could come here and say tab color, and I could say, you know, uh, red, so FF0000, and then that will now be um, be red. Actually, I'll do it like this, then I get a nice color picker. This is another nice benefit of being able to do things inside of Visual Studio Code. Now I can pick my, my color like that. Isn't that cool? Blue. All right. So tab color can be set there as well. Now, you can interact with the terminal, both using the keyboard and the mouse. One of the things, oh, this is a good reminder. Take a look at this here. You see this here? You see how it's saying, uh, you know, there's a setting that you did wrong? It won't allow you to mess up this file. So if I did something incorrect here, it won't allow me to do that, which is cool. So don't be afraid that you're going to booger up this, um, this page. Okay. All right. Next uh, reminder is the ability to zoom with the mouse. Okay. Zoom with the mouse. That means I can hold down control with one of my fingers and I can 
zoom with the other, okay? And that zoom is going to persist for as long as that terminal session stays there. So when I hit control, that's going to stay that way. Now, control and shift, two fingers, control, shift, zoom. I'm zooming out. Now I've got transparency. So I've made my background of my terminal, uh, my acrylic background transparent, and now it is completely opaque. So that is control, control, shift, and scroll as well. Okay. And then if we go back over to our settings. There's one kind of setting that isn't quite official yet, but I believe we've got it in here. Let's go and search for acrylic. Use acrylic in tab row. You see that right there? Use acrylic in tab row. That makes this tab row here also uh, transparent. So as we go and make our, our background more and more and more transparent so we can see behind it, the tab row is also transparent, which is nice. Okay, so that's new. Now, uh, a lot of people don't realize that you um, also have clickable URLs. So if we go into, let's say, one of my um, one of my websites, let's go into yeah my podcast site, and we'll go down one, and I'll say .NET Run. That's going to go and start up a log, and start up a log file, and that log file is going to include a a URL. Okay. So when that happens, you can see here localhost 5001. When I hover over it, you see how it's got an underline there. That means that I can click on that. So clickable hyperlinks. I can click on that, and that will go and launch a browser. Now I did have to control click on that. I had to control click, which is pretty standard with log files. You can see if I hover right there, it'll actually say control click to follow the link. All right. So that's pretty cool. I'm back. We'll hit Control C to stop that, and I'm going to hit Control L to clear clear out my uh, my screen. Now I've got some folders on my desktop here. One of them is called Learning Git. I've got this folder here called Learning Git. Now I could potentially go and grab that on uh, my desktop. Find Learning Git. I'm going to drag and drop that over here and drop it on top of the tab bar. And in doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up directly in that folder. So you can drag and drop a folder into Windows Terminal and immediately get uh, a tab that is opened up into that location, which is really, really cool. Okay, so that's an important Windows, uh, Windows tip. Now, color schemes are something that is uh, somewhat well known, but you can note here that there's a ton of color schemes, a ton of color schemes that come with a terminal, but you can also edit your own. So Ubuntu Legit is a color scheme that I added myself, and that gives me this nice Ubuntu color scheme here. Those color schemes can be found all over the, the net, and you can see if I search for Ubuntu Legit, I reference it here. I reference it there, color scheme Ubuntu Legit. And then we can find it right there. And again, you can edit that color scheme information either in uh, the UI or in JSON. It's up to you. I, uh, I like it. And uh, if you hover over them, you can make your changes directly within the color picker that's included with, um, with the Windows, uh, Visual, excuse me, with the Visual Studio Code, rather. Cool. So another one that's kind of cool, this is a little bit obscure, uh, I think it's a little silly, but it's kind of fun, is there's two options for retro effects, okay? One is called retro terminal effect, experimental retro terminal effect. Let's go ahead and turn that to true. And we'll go back over here. And you'll notice that We've got this kind of retro weird thing going on here with the scan lines trying to simulate a CRT. That's cute. I find it a little bit weird, a little bit in my face. So not a huge fan of that. However, there is support for shaders. Okay. And these shaders are what are called HLSL shaders. I'm going to bring one of these up here. I want to say Windows Terminal Shaders. Okay. And this HLSL, our, our language that is it's kind of a C-like language used to write pixel shaders, okay? HLSL. 
Change L. That's L. Okay. So what you put in is this experimental pixel shader path. That is a setting that does not yet have a UI for it. So I'm going to go here. We'll use, um, do, 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 do. what are we going to do? Let's do PowerShell. I'm going to say experimental pixel shader path. Okay. And then I've actually got some pixel shaders that I've already got. You can find these all over and there's terminal examples as well. My terminal shaders are in my GitHub folder and they are in shader, shader, shaders. People are like, they're right there. I'm like, dude, I can't see them. Here they are. Okay. Right click. GitHub Windows Terminal Shaders. Oh, what was the name of that shader actually? CRT. So copy as path, come back down here. And I'm going to just change these backslashes into double backslashes. Make sure that I only have one quote. So that's the path to my experimental pixel shader. And then I'm going to close this terminal. Looks good. Nothing wrong there. Okay. And we'll go ahead and we'll open up the terminal again. Look at that. So that's not just a retro effect. That's a totally different kind of look and feel right there. And that's going to do that for all of... Actually, no, it's not going to do it for all because I only set it up for PowerShell. Now, what's cool about this is I could potentially take that HLSL file and we could go and open it in Visual Studio Code. I'll do it without the double backslashes. And I'll make a change, for example, we'll say enable tint equals zero. Okay. And then we'll come here and we'll open up a fresh tab so that we get a recompiled sh shader. Okay. So now we've got a shader here. Oops, looks like I've angered the beast here. Sometimes when you do experimental things, you could potentially crash stuff. So don't think of that as being representative of Windows Terminal having a problem. It's more likely that I've done something stupid uh, in, my, uh, in my shader. Okay, so let's go ahead and toss that real quick. And we'll open up Terminal again. There we go. So here we've got that Terminal shader, a little bit different, it's custom. And then if I want to, I can go back in here and I can enable scan lines or enable noise or change the tint color. So I could say tint color here, enable tint here, close that shader, and then open it up again. Now I've got a black and white shader, which is kind of cool, right? All kinds of choices that you can do. Again, experimental, but really, really cool. This particular one here uh, was Hans Koch, uh, who made this particular uh, Windows uh, Windows Terminal shader, which is pretty cool. And then I started modifying it, got myself in trouble there. So that's really cool. A lot of people don't realize that. Another one that I want to point out are making some really basic changes to your key bindings to make life easier. The two that I really recommend are New Tab and Close Pane. And I like to have these align to the same thing that you get in a browser. Control T for New Tab, Control W to close a pane. Okay. The reason that I do these two, Control T and Control W, you can also set them up here if I go to Settings and go under Actions. You can actually see the Control T is bound right there. Okay. And Control W is right here. By default, it's Control Shift T and Control Shift W. So what's nice about this is that my workflow is I start up my tab and I can hit Control T, Control T, Control T, or I can hit the drop down here and I can hold down Alt with my thumb and we'll open up like Ubuntu in a tab. And then while that's coming up, we'll open up the cloud prompt here. I'll click in this one and I'll open up another PowerShell. I mean, I don't like it over there. I'm going to hit Control W. I'm going to click back over to this side and open up a PowerShell. So now I've got my panes like this. All right. And then I'll hit control W, control W, control W. Now you can use Tmux. You can use screen. There's lots of things you can do to do that, but it's nice 
that you can uh, get that, that experience. It's very, very intuitive because you're just using your left hand. You're going Control T, Control T, open up a new tab, Control W, Control W to close panes. And then when you are doing that, you can go like this. Now, there is a split pane option though. So split pane, Control Shift minus as an example. So I can come here and take the existing pane and just hit Control Shift minus. Or um, what I also set up was um, Control Shift uh, pipe so minus would be horizontal and pipe would be vertical, but it just kind of depends. I think control shift D was another one. You can set these up the way that you want. You got to set them in such a way that you don't forget them. So I think it's alt shift D actually, that opens up another one. And then uh, you can go control shift minus or control shift plus, depending on whether you want to get um, horizontal or vertical. Those things are often, often forgotten, okay? So those are just some of the uh, little advanced tips and tricks that you can get with the Windows Terminal that folks don't really think about. Go ahead and let me know what your tips and tricks are, how you like to use the terminal uh, in, the, uh, in the comments here. And I appreciate you all. Please subscribe and tell your friends. Thanks.